Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 27th of March 2023. So I'll be answering lots of your sewing and dressmaking questions that you've sent in beforehand, asking for tips and advice on your projects and then also asking for recommendations and fabric um, fabric and sewing pattern matches as well. So lots of inspiration to be had. I've also got lots of lovely new fabrics to show you from Liberty and Fabric Godmother. So yeah, lots of inspiration and some info and sneak peek hints about our upcoming Sewing Society kit launch in April. So I'm going to switch over to the live video now. I hope you enjoy it. If you do have any comments or questions you want me to answer in a future session, just leave them in the comments below this video and I'll see you shortly. Hi everybody. I hope you're having a good evening. I'm sorry I'm a couple of minutes late if you're watching this live. I had some slight phone charging situation. I just wanted to maximise my phone charging before I started. I think it's on about 50% so fingers crossed that it is going to last. Um, I hope you're all doing really well. It's lovely to see so many of you. Um, I have had a super busy day slash weekend getting everything ready for a big event on Saturday um, so I feel a little bit like a duck who's like frantically paddling underwater right now but it's all gonna be fine. Um, so yeah I do have lots of nice things to show you tonight, some really lovely new fabrics and some useful questions as well. It's always good to learn from each other and quite often if one person's asked it somebody else is thinking about it as well um so so yeah um somebody's saying hi nice top thank you lovely top um this one is my adapted fiber mood norma blouse which i i sort of adapted inspired by the Alla, anna allen anthea blouse which is quite similar but i feel like the sleeves on that are a lot bigger Whereas the sleeves on the Norma are like a little bit more, they are still sort of gathered and puffy, but like they're not quite as big as that. Um, and yeah, I, I changed the neckline as well. So I raised it up and made it curved and I put bias binding on the neckline instead of a facing. But the base pattern is the Norma. It's actually, it also comes up quite short. I can't really tuck this one in. But yeah, that I've got high-waisted jeans on and it's, yeah, it's like fine. Um, thank you for the lovely cotton twill several months ago. Now finished Isla Trench and it's so good. Oh, that sounds nice. Have you posted a picture, Hannah? I'll need to check that out. That sounds like a lovely project. Um, I'm looking forward to coming in Saturday. Looking forward to seeing you. Um, okay, so the new things that I've got to show you tonight are we've had some of the new Liberty fabrics in for their like spring summer collection. Summer classics actually, so they so Liberty have like a classics collection which gets sort of refreshed and they bring out they're obviously not new prints because they're classic prints, but they bring out like new versions of classic prints, like they might recolor them or sometimes they sort of um they sometimes resize them. So so yeah, I've got some of them to show you and then also some of the new ones as well. You might have seen this on my Instagram already. The Capel is out in three quite vibrant colours. I feel like the colours of Capel that I've are cap capel. I was having a debate with somebody about this, about how to actually pronounce it. C-A-P-E-L, however you want to say it. Um, so we've got it in an ochre, this really lovely navy, and then a super vibrant green, which I think is gorgeous. They just look really nice, really like vibrant, rich colours. Um, so, so yeah, that's obviously from one of their classics. I've got a feeling that this, I'm now like getting slightly mixed up with what's classic and what's not. I've got a feeling that this potentially might be as well. Um, that's like a really lovely navy background and almost a bit more, it's not sort of like fine and kind of daint, like precise crisp lines. It's a bit more kind of painterly and sort of artistic, that one's like slightly different vibes to that one. And then this is very beautiful. It's like a lovely, a lovely meadow, that one. I really like the colours in that as well. It's quite a pale pink in the background. Um, so yeah, that one. And then this one. It's got a lovely navy background, beautiful nice pinks and purples in that one as well. So these are all in the just arrived section now. And then this one, which we also haven't, it's got more of like a light, lighter background. Um, this one with really beautiful roses on it as well. 
which is gorgeous. And then a couple that are like larger scale, which I think are really cool. I actually, I'm gonna open it a little bit so you can see more of like the full extent of it. I think it's really lovely, like nice big sort of bold print. I love that one. It's got beautiful colors in it as well. And then this one is also on a bit of a larger scale. Lovely, like bright lime green in that one too with these beautiful purpley flowers. So yeah, a couple of larger scale ones as well. So yeah, a little bit of liberty, loveliness to show you there. And then you might have already seen them on Instagram as well. I've got some of the gorgeous new Fabric Godmother ones. Um, this is definitely making its way onto my to sew list. And I've decided that I think it would look really cute in a Helen's Closet Gilbert sleeveless, Helen's Closet Gilbert with the little tie front. I think that would be really cute for summer. So this one is on a linen viscose base. It's 55 linen, 45 viscose. It's the Fruta Ivory Viscose Linen Fabric. It's almost like got postage stamp vibes to it, this one. But then it's like little fruits that are on it. And it also comes in a cotton lawn in a navy colour way as well. So we've got that one as well. I just didn't bring it over to show you, but same print, same scale. Just a navy background and on a cotton lawn instead. And then we have got, oh sorry, this rolled really floppy. Um, some of the more sort of like artisanal ones, like this one's kind of looks like crochet granny squares, which is really cute. It's on a viscose crepe, so it's got a nice texture to it as well. It's not flat. The crepe gives it like a little bit more of a sort of a delicate kind of bubbly texture. So it's really beautiful. I love the colours in that one, really lovely in summary. And then this one is also on a viscose crepe. And it's a bit like it's cross stitched, but the scale's quite big. I'm gonna open it out. It's quite abstract though. Like I wouldn't say you would you would necessarily like pattern match it or anything, but yeah, hopefully you can lift it up a bit. Oh, that you can like see the sort of scale that it is. Beautiful and lovely and drapey as well. Um, and then, okay, somebody's asking, I love the navy background floral. Would it be too lightweight for a rose cafe bustier? I'm not actually sure what that is, but I feel like maybe, I don't know if you, if you're making a bustier, would you just have to like line it and sort of um, like underline it maybe, and it might be okay. Um, then this is another sort of cross stitched one here. This is the flossy Echo Vero Viscose crepe. So another crepe one. And that's got like a sort of stitched kind of dis like feel to it as well, but like a tapestry maybe. Again, just really beautiful colors in that one. It's very lovely, a bit of a larger scale on that one as well. So I think maybe something like a, I think it would be nice and like quite a long sort of floaty skirt with just like a little simple t-shirt, like a white, simple white t-shirt would look, make a nice summery outfit. Um, so yeah, and then there was one more Fabric Godmother one that I brought over to show you, which I think is beautiful. And somebody had asked, it's ahead of my questions here, but somebody had asked fabric for a wedding guest in August for the Closet Court Elodie, and I think this would be perfect. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It is the Celine Viscose Crepe. I feel like it's a slightly different texture of crepe to the others. Um, but so so it's not like a it's not like a flat, smooth viscose. Sorry, the roll is really floppy, so it's like I'm holding up somebody who's a bit legless here. Um, <laughs> oh, there we go. Hopefully you can sort of see the scale of that as well. So it's really beautiful, bright, a vibrant pink, and then it's like a sort of chalky kind of blue in the background. Um, and then these really lovely flowers. I think that would be gorgeous as a dress, as a closet core elegy. And make a nice pairing, especially for a wedding. Um, okay, so that was the new things that I wanted to show you. We have also got some new Atelier Brunette fabrics, which literally arrived today. But I don't think they're going to be online till Wednesday, so I'll probably save them for next week. I'll show you them then, but yeah. Um, it's the new colours of the gingham gauze. So it's like this fabric, but it's the brighter, more sort of summery colours. Um, but yeah, I'll show you them next week. But if you're desperate, they should be online, maybe like Wednesday. Um, okay, so the other things I wanted to, 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 some people were asking me about the kits, any more clues for the kits, all the suspense is building up. Um, I feel like when I planned all, all of the sneak peeks that were coming up um, for, the, for, the, for the birthday launch and all that sort of thing, seemed appropriate at the time. I kind of feel like it's, I've kind of dragged it out a bit, but I hope you're still with me and you're still excited <laughs> about it. Um, so yeah. 
only a few days to go. Um, so the, but the other clues that I will give you is that there's going to be two new fabrics that come out in the kits. So as you may, you may know already, if you've seen my reels, etc. So the, the in-person launch on Saturday is the event at the shop where you can come, you can get the kits, you can get the fabric. You can't make it on Saturday. We will have like a limited amount of stock sort of set aside for the event. And then if you can't make it on the Saturday, then you can join in online on the Sunday. So we'll release everything on the Sunday online. You can't really do the two in tandem. Um, so it's going to be 11 o'clock on Sunday morning that the newsletter goes out that has the links for you to get access to the, the kits. But what I'm going to do is probably maybe like Wednesday or Thursday this week, I'm going to send out an email that has got everything you need to know about the weekend, like the timings of things and what's going to be available and when and that sort of thing, obviously without giving too much away. But everything you like need to know about the weekend if you're interested in getting access to new fabrics and the new kits and all of that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, but there is going to be two fabrics that come out. Um, one is going to be the Chica Cheetah print, but it's going to be in a different type of fabric, so very different type of garment than what the Chica Cheetah was in before. And then the birthday print is, I don't actually know if I've said what kind of fabric it's going to be on yet. Maybe I'll just say it now. It's going to be on an Echo Vera Viscose. Um, so it's going to be really beautiful, floaty and drapey and magical. Um, so, so yeah, I would, uh, there's also going to be three versions of kits, just like possibly slightly confusing. It will all become clear. Um, but it's just because one of the patterns that we've chosen to be in the kit has a top version and, um, I'm giving too much away now. I'm going to stop. Sorry, everyone. I'm getting excited. Okay. Somebody's saying they're super excited to visit on Saturday. Driving from Essex. Wow. I hope you have a safe drive. Um, somebody else is asking what pattern is your top. I was just chatting about that before. It's the Fibre Mid Norma, but I changed it a little bit, bit more. It's, so it's a little bit more like the Anna Allen and the Athletics. Um, okay, so the other thing before I get into the questions, last thing was, this was a comment on the YouTube recording that I posted because um, somebody was asking last time about stretch wide leg pants patterns. So this lady has suggested the California Pants by Atelier Scamet. Beautiful pattern, fitted straight out of the packet and great instructions guiding you how to size relative to the amount of stretch in your fabric. So a little recommendation there. Somebody else is driving from Cambridge. Lovely, safe drive to you also and anybody else who's driving. Okay, so the first question that got sent in beforehand was, what are the differences between the linens please enzyme versus just linen? So enzyme, the, the enzyme linen that we have is 100% linen, but the reason it gets called enzyme linen is just because it gets treated with enzymes and it sort of like starts to just kind of take, change the texture and the feel of it a little bit and like the look of it, because it just starts to sort of like, I guess like break it down a little, like wear it in a little bit. Um, and then, so so the, so in terms of the ones that we have, enzyme versus just linen, there's not really like a comparison because the enzyme linen that we have is just linen, is 100% linen. Um, but if you get linen that hasn't been enzyme washed, it might just have like a slightly different texture, sort of feel or kind of softness to it. But you can also get linens that are different weights as well. So some linens can, that you could get two linens that are both 100% linen, but one could be much thicker and heavier and one could be quite lightweight and fine. And that just, that you know, the only way you're going to be able to distinguish that is either by how the, how the linen is described. So either lightweight or medium weight, or if it's if the, the GSM, the grams per square meter is listed on the, on the fabric, which quite often we do know, but sometimes we don't, especially if a fabric's like a dead stock fabric or an ex designer fabric, that specific information is, doesn't always translate through. So then you, you are kind of relying a little bit more on more subjective ways to describe it like lightweight linen compared to medium weight or heavier weight linen. So last summer I did do a blog post that was all about different types of linen because we have quite a few viscose linen, lightweight linen, enzyme linen, serona linen, all these different linens. So I did a blog post and a video last summer that sort of compares them all and helps you to try and spot the differences basically and work out what might be best for the type of project that you're working with. Um, but if linen is mixed with other things, 
then it, like viscose um, then it tends to just be like a little bit more floppy so this is a viscose linen it will also depends on the mix as well so the more viscose linen has in it the more floppy it will be um, so so yeah this is a viscose linen you can see it's quite floppy it's quite drapey um, and the let me tell you the like the percentage composition is 75 viscose 25 linen so this is quite a, quite a lot of viscose so compare that floppiness to the enzyme linen which is a hundred percent linen and it's just a little bit thicker like it doesn't can you see that it's not sort of like swishing and kind of draping around as much like it doesn't have as much movement it's just got more structure so hopefully that helps okay the next question was a best needle for Buckley or jacquard i would probably say size 80 or 90 should be fine like 90 if there's quite a lot of thick layers that you're having to sew through or if it's quite tightly woven like it's a very dense fabric then you could go for microtex which is just like extra sharp um what other comments am i missing here i'd love to visit the store but i'm too far away you can join in online i'm so excited looking forward to meeting people as i only know people on instagram who sew yeah that'll be really exciting i want to come but i have to work oh no that's a shame you can join in online soon um what's the pattern your top you have on it's the fiber mood normal but it's adapted to be a little bit more like the anna allen anthea okay the next question was could the salt water slip be made on the bias and if so what should i adjust i tried to have a quick look at this i haven't had to i'm gonna admit i haven't totally had time to think it through so if anybody has made the salt water slip on the bias shout out now but but i was thinking you probably could do it um you would just need to change where the grain line is so that you, so that you cut it out in the bias um or no actually would you just no you wouldn't you would just fold the fabric so that it was on a bias on the bias you just fold it so the fold was at 45 degrees to the selvage and then put it on i guess maybe it might be that you you end up would you maybe want to size down potentially but i don't know maybe you just make it and then you could always just take it in if you felt like it was um if it was too big because obviously if it's on the bias like the fabric stretches a bit more or would have like more given it if anybody's made the salt water slip in the bias as i said share now um okay so the next question is interfacings do you have a blog post on those there's so many types i get a bit confused yes i do have a blog post on it so if you just type put it in the search bar on the website, put in like types of interfacing. And then if you if you scroll down to the blog search results, then you'll see, you'll see the guide to interfacings that are there. So it sort of explains the differences between them. I would say if you're doing like general dressmaking for like everyday things, there's probably only like a few that you would regularly use. Um, so it might just be about narrowing it down, not getting too overwhelmed by all the different types and sort of narrowing it down to like the types of sewing you do and the ones that you would need for the types of sewing that you do okay somebody says i made the salt water slip on the bias with some satin and it was lovely excellent did you make any other changes um and then somebody else is saying the sicily is a bias slip dress so yeah maybe you could so you could maybe have a look at that as well and then just use that that pattern instead of the salt water okay the next one was for patterns do you cut on the black line or next to it also lining up patterns do you overlap so i'm presuming that this question is about when you like cut out a sewing pattern and you're like cutting on the line like where exactly do you cut i would say you cut like on the line for the size that you're making because you want to cut out your fabric like to that exact same shape so that it comes out this the size that you want it to um also i don't okay yeah that was that also lining up patterns do you overlap i'm not totally sure what this question means to be honest maybe like lining up patterns as in pattern matching the key things about pattern matching are that you have to you almost have to think ahead and think about what's going to happen to this bit of fabric once it's been stitched to something else so that you're taking account of any seam allowances or like say it's a button band and you're folding it back like what is the what's the kind of finished part that you're going to see if ever I'm doing any accurate pattern matching as well, I always cut out on the single layer because it's just much easier to control what you're cutting. And I generally would start at the front and work my way backwards, doing like the most visible pieces first. So do, you know, think about what's going to be at the neckline, down the centre front, and then you can use the notch on your 
armhole to then work out what's going to happen at the sleeve and then you can use what's happening at the side seam and at the hem to then match across your back so yeah i would always sort of do it in that order kind of start at the front or most visible place and work my way back cutting out in a single layer okay the next one was differences between the big four and independent pattern brands which do you prefer I did do a blog post and a video about this. It was, would have been quite a few years ago now, but I guess like the principles would have been the same and I haven't really significantly changed my mind since then. Um, so if you, again, if you have a look on the website, the post itself has got the very catchy title of Beginner's Guide to Reading and Interpreting Sewing Patterns and Choosing a Size. Um, so in there, I talk a lot about the differences between Indie and the Big Four. I would so my personal preference is the independent patterns and that's usually because they have a little bit more like almost like personality or design aesthetic they tend to be like a little bit more insp inspirational as well like there's maybe more photographs of them or there's more like blog posts that kind of yeah just give you like more ideas about them and also with, with the big four patterns they have like hundreds and hundreds of patterns don't they so then it can be hard to, you know, there's, there's maybe not as many people who've made like each individual pattern or it's harder to find them. Whereas within indie pattern companies, I would say that it's e it's easier to see like lots of different versions of them because there there's not as many of them. So then more people have made each one. So then it's easier to see what the patterns look like in different versions and things. It would be really useful if you find it hard to picture what different fabrics would look like made into certain patterns. Um, and yeah, I would say that's like a brief summary, but if you want my full story of why I generally prefer them, then you can check out that blog post. Having said that, I would say that probably the big four patterns maybe are getting like a bit better. I feel like it's, is it the simplicity ones that I've seen a little bit more recently and they've sort of redesigned their packaging. It's definitely like much more appealing, more modern, more attractive, um, than, than what it used to be. Um, also, I think maybe in terms of instructions, quite often the independent ones, certain companies as well, obviously all the independent pattern companies are very different in terms of how they, their style and how they sort of explain things. But I would say typically there's usually like more in-depth instructions as well. Um, okay. So, okay, somebody's saying, I've fallen in love with the new Atelier Dupe Grace ja jacket. If you've seen it, do you think I could make it in the Thelma fabric or alternatively in a fleece back scuba? I haven't actually seen that. Um, if you send me a direct message, then I can have a quick look and then I'll know to get back to you. But sorry, I, can't, I, don't, I don't know what it looks like. Um, how do I avoid lines pressing through on a viscose satin when pressing seams? Um, I think if you can try to press over, press on the reverse of the fabric and if you can press on a ham or a sleeve roll so that as you and, and almost like use the tip of the iron like right on the on the seam line rather than and, and then also if because if you're doing it from the inside of the garment and you've got the fabric sort of like draped around like a ham or a sleeve roll then there's not as much contact between like the outside edges of the seam allowance and like the rest of the fabric so it's not going to push into it as much and like leave an indentation if you don't have one of them you could maybe just try and like really tightly like roll up a towel so that it's just like a kind of dome and maybe like i don't know somehow secure it like that there are actually some tutorials that you can get online as well on how to make your own tailor's ham. So another option, but yeah. We do sell both in the shop. Um, I'm about to sew the saguaro trousers. Are the sizes accurate? I often sew garments that turn out too big. Um, I would say the sizes are pretty accurate. Yeah, from my experience. As an American company, remember, so the sizes, the way the sizes are labeled might not, depending on what country you're from, might not be what you know that you would maybe buy in the shop so most definitely definitely pick a size based on your body measurements they are designed to be quite loose fitting at the hips you know there's quite a lot of ease there what my, my own personal experience of the sequaros are is that they're probably slightly too long in the crotch and then slightly shorter than what i thought they might be 
So if I was making them again, I would probably reduce the height of the crotch a tiny little bit and then make them a little bit longer. But that is just me. That is just me. Um, obviously that's quite an individual thing. Um, I definitely prefer, prefer independent patterns. It's also good to support small independent companies and shops, true. I've had to make twelves after too many sacks. I saw someone use paper under the seams to stop the lines. Another good suggestion. Can you recommend any pregnancy trouser patterns? Um, I would say what trousers, because I wear a lot of trousers. When I was pregnant, I mostly wore the Virgin, the Megan Nielsen Virginia leggings, which have a maternity option, which is low. It sits under the bump. Um, so it's quite sort of low at the front. And um, then I'm trying to think if there's, no, sorry, I thought I could remember something else there. So I mostly wore them with like tunics or sort of dresses, like kind of longer tops or shirts. And then I also just, I, I, I'm afraid I just bought a pair of maternity jeans that had like the big stretchy thing. Um, if anybody knows of any other pregnancy trouser patterns, though, shout them out. I've made two pairs of saguaro pants and found their sizing bang on. Okay, that's another good, useful thing to know there too. Okay, the next one was a cocoa dress. I'm presuming that's the Tilly and the Buttons cocoa dress in Ponte with contrasting collar and cuffs in a woven fabric. Would this work? I'm going to say no. Sorry, I don't think it would because the cocoa, it was years ago I made the cocoa, like first, when it first came out. But from what I can remember, it, um, you you kind of need the stretch in the fabric. So I don't think there would be, an, there's like enough design ease in the fabric to get away with using a woven fabric. I'm sorry. Um, is there a way to remove iron on interfacing from cotton twill? Do I just gently heat it and peel it off? Thank you. Um, it depends how well it's been bonded on. It might sort of, and it also depends what type of interfacing it is. If it's non-woven interfacing and it's been like really, really bonded on quite well, it might kind of like tear a little bit and disintegrate if you try and pick it off. Um, but if it's not really bonded on that much in the first place, to be honest, you might be able to just kind of pick it off at the corner. Um, I would be cautious about trying to heat it again too much. I would say if you heat it, almost like try and hold it up and just like scoosh the iron at it to like steam it rather than applying pressure because if you apply pressure with the heat it's just going to make it stick even more Um, the avery have a maternity hack good to know the winslow are good too excellent thank you for those suggestions okay my sewing stitches seem too tight when sewing viscose do you have any advice for sewing viscose um I'm not, it's hard to picture totally what the the stitches seem too tight. I'm guessing maybe it's something to do with like the tension and the fab and the tension in the stitches. I tend to just, in terms of like, you know, sew, sewing and like the stitch and that sort of thing, when I sew viscose, use like a regular straight stitch, two and a half millimeter length, um, use good quality thread. You shouldn't, I, I, in my experience, I've never found that I have to really alter the tension of my machine when I sew viscose. So it might be worth checking like all the real like easy sort of quick checks like as the bobbin been wound at tension correctly in the right direction as the bobbin inserted so that the thread comes off in the correct direction as the as the top as the top thread threaded correctly with the needle at the highest position so it's definitely catching in that top you know all of those things are you using good quality thread definitely all of those things are worthwhile checking if you're finding the stitches are tight um, quite often with viscose, when you at the very, very start, because it's lightweight, it can almost feel like the machine's eating it a little bit. Um, again, make sure you've got the right needle. I would definitely say a Microtex for viscose fabric, maybe like a size 70, possibly an 80, um, depending on what you're making and the, the specific type of viscose, that, that should also help as well. Um, so a few things to try there. Um, use a nice new smaller needle for viscose as my favorite fabric to sew um, definitely i would say some viscoses can be a little bit more sensitive than others in the needle department so yeah sometimes you do even have to go down to a 60 if it's like a really fine if it's like a viscose lawn that's very very lightweight and um, but i usually find usually a 70 is fine 
Okay, the next question is my mid slash entry level brother machine just couldn't deal with the bulk around my sasha waistband to do a buttonhole. There was a thicker area that stopped the machine being able to move the fabric to make the buttonhole. I ended up sewing one by hand, but I wondered if even the fanciest machine would struggle if there's a bulky area getting in the way. I mean, I think like if it's really, really bulky, yes, probably. There's always going to be like a limit to any sort of domestic sewing machine. But I would say there's definitely things that you can do to sort of help that. And also, I, I mean, my, my experience of like using various levels of brother sewing machines, the, the, the one I use mostly now, the one I've got at home is a VQ2, which is like a quite, a, quite like a top end one. Um, so, and, and I've, I've found that it can do any kind of buttonhole, like it's never really held me back. But the ones that we have in the studio, they're the Innovis 1300s. I would say that they are generally like fine as well. I mean, we do because we do the Sasha workshop and we've done that quite a lot. And I think the, you know, the, the machines have always been able to cope with the buttonholes there. So I think it should be fine. But other things that you can, if you're finding your machine is struggling to sew a buttonhole, definitely obviously do, do checks, like make sure you've got a nice sharp needle, that kind of thing. But then also some machines I find, and even my machine does this sometimes too, the little buttonhole lever that comes down can be quite sensitive and that if anything touches it, it can just get stuck a little bit or like put off its little loop of kind of doing its one step thing and going around the edges of the buttonhole. And so I would say definitely thinking about the way that you insert the, pro the project into the machine to make sure that nothing is gonna touch that little buttonhole lever that drops down. I mean, even my machine sometimes is just, it's like it's in a bad mood and you just can't even breathe next to it because it just like gets stuck in the spot and then won't move. Um, so, so yeah, definitely make sure nothing's like touching that. But then also things like just maybe like before you get to sewing the buttonhole, making sure that you've trimmed seam allowances back so nothing is too bulky because it quite often it can be if like, if it's sort of all on the level and then all immediately all of a sudden it's like really bulky. You know, if it's like one extreme to the other in the layer. So trying to sort of even that out or grade it out. Um, or you could use like a, pre a, you could use a pressing clapper to steam it and press it. So it like squidges all the layers together much flatter before you sew the buttonhole. That can also help as well. Cause then, you know, it's just easier for the machine to feed it through. So um, a few things to try there. Um, the latest Love to Sew pod podcast episode talks about how to add an elastic waistband to any trousers as well. Okay, useful maybe for maternity things. Um, somebody else is saying I always need to adjust the tension when sewing viscose. Okay, so it might be a specific machine thing then. Uh, okay, I've been using the same basic Genome Magnolia machine for 13 years since I started sewing. I make all kinds of things now and I am wondering whether to upgrade any ideas about machines? Um, I only really have experience using brother machines and my experience of using brother machines is that every time I use the next model up, um, I'm always like, whoa, this is so much better. Um, so I definitely think that you, you know, the more you stretch your budget, you, get, you, you do get what you pay for. That's been my experience with brother sewing machines anyway. Um, Okay, thanks Lauren. I think this is my excuse to get machine upgrades. I think the amount of amount of sewing you do, Helen, you definitely could, you know, I think you get your use out of a machine upgrade. I don't think you need to justify it. Feel free, this is this is my permission to you to go and get get the good machine. Um, mine has different buttonhole settings for different fabrics and you can alter the gap in the middle. I have a Bernina 570QE, but you can upgrade forever. <laughs> That is true. Um, you can upgrade forever. Um, you just get deeper and deeper into the sewing hole. Okay, so the next question was, could you use stretch cuffing on a woven fabric like cotton? I am adapting an assembly line top, which is now big for me, and I thought it might be fun to put some actual cuffing on it, but stretch on fixed, will it work? I think it would work. I think you could do that. And there are some patterns that are made out of woven fabric, but then they have an elastic cuff. In fact, the assembly line has one. I can't remember what it's called now, but the assembly line do have a, a pattern where it's 
It looks a bit like a sweater, but you make it out of woven fabric, but then the neck line, the neck band and the cuffs and the hem are made out of cuffing or stretch, stretched fabric. Um, Merchant and Mills also have a similar style of garment too, so I definitely think you could, Jess. Um, I'm making the two stitches baby grow and would like advice on the best type of interfacing on the jersey leg opening and neck, please. This is like quite your classic baby grow where it's got, you know, the thing and the thing under here with all the studs to open it. The high cuff top, that's the assembly line one. Um, so when you're making that two stitches baby grow, I personally would use, I've made it before, I would probably use medium weight iron-on interfacing because you don't, although you're using a stretch fabric, this is designed to be made out of jersey, you don't really want that bit to stretch. So I think you need to put inter, because it's going to weaken the studs, the pop studs. You need something that's like really stable to withstand the, the amount of times you're going to be opening and closing in those press studs. So I my, my personal suggestion, having used it before, would be medium iron-on interfacing. I'm a Janome girl and I've just upgraded to the Janome 5060 QDC and it's streaming. It does sound very fancy. Um, that sounds lovely. Okay, the next question is, I'm relatively new to sewing and I have a question regarding cutting fabric on the fold. I have read that fabric should be folded right sides together when cutting on the fold, but every time I see people doing it on YouTube, they have the fabric folded wrong sides together, which is correct. So my take on this would be that if you're making something that is symmetrical, it doesn't really matter what way out you have your fabric because when you get to the point where you've got all your pieces cut out, you're going to end up with exactly the same thing, whether your fabric was facing right sides together or wrong sides together. The only time it's really going to make a difference that you'd have to think about it is if you're making something asymmetrical. Then Obviously, whatever way you cut it out is going to affect what um, what side your asymmetrical design is going to be on. Now, the other reason that I personally like to cut my fabric out with the right side facing up, which is obviously more important when you're using like a patterned fabric or something that's got a design on it, is I just like to feel in control of what part of the pattern I can see when I cut because I might be like, you know, if it's like a flowery pattern or something, I might be like, well, you know, I want that part of the design to be on this part of the garment. And then obviously you can be in more control of that if your fabric's folded with the right sides facing out. I don't know whether maybe, and somebody might be able to answer this, this idea that I've got here, this question. I don't know whether maybe like historically that was the advice that was given that you cut your fabric facing in maybe to do with like how you marked it on or maybe how you marked your fabric. Like maybe it was, it came from when maybe the, the general advice was that you would like place your pattern on and then you would draw around it with chalk and then cut it out or you would put any markings on and then they would be then be on the back of your fabric rather than the front. I don't know, maybe that's, that's why it's like that. But, but yeah, if you're making something symmetrical, basically it doesn't matter what way, either way is correct. Okay, um, I made the shorts version of the Pietra pants and watched your video from when you made a pair. I need some help in fitting them to me in the back. I'm just under five foot three and the high waist came up practically under my bra area. I shortened them in the front without an issue, but in the back, I ended up only having enough room for a very narrow piece of elastic, not the recommended two inches. And I had loads of fabric that had to be gathered. What did I do wrong? I would say, wait, where were you reducing the height from? Because if you were doing it from the top down, then that would have been why you didn't really then have like enough space for elastic and stuff. You need to be shortening the crotch like on the pattern, on the paper pattern, you know, here, taking out the height here, so that then when you cut the fabric out, the top is just still, the top of the waistband bits are still the same. The height's been taken out elsewhere. Um, so, so yeah, I would, that would be my first sort of, port of call to check and um, somebody saying right side up helps avoid things like flower boobs or flower crotch if you know what I mean yeah I do know what you mean and um, it was historically the thing we were taught to do I suspected that I'm just I'm think, just thinking of a reason why and um, 
because I also think, because I, I was also wondering, and again, somebody might be able to like correct me on this, is that is the reason that tacking was so like the done thing, like hand basting or hand tacking th something, is it because there was, because not everybody had pins to pin stuff? Maybe, I don't know. Um, okay, I always cut out fabric from the right side. I think even at school many years ago, we did that too. Um, so over it, have a lot of sew alongs. Any pattern companies that have sew alongs like Greenline do, True Bias do, Closet Core do, Megan Nielsen do. Um, so over it, yeah, Tilly and the Buttons do as well, I think. Um, because we were taught to tack, yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, so the next ones were, what time are we on? We're doing okay. Fabric for blazers for spring and summer. I've got a few options. You could go for something like the cotton, this is 100% cotton twill, this one. Um, rose cotton twill, it comes in lots of different colours. It's 14.50 a metre, it's quite narrow, it's 44 inches wide. Um, and it's got quite a sort of textured like twill weave on it, but you know, nice, like nice sort of lighter weight blazer. The other one that I think would be really nice and nice and smart as well is this. We've got quite a few colours of this as well. It's the matte stretch cotton fabrics, 13.50 a, a metre. This is specifically the wash teal colourway, so it's got a bit of stretch in it and it almost feels a little bit like it's been brushed. Like when you put your hand on it, it's almost like you can feel like it's just been brushed a little bit. It's really nice and just got that little bit of stretch, but I think that would look really smart as a nice summer blazer. And then this one might start to sort of make it look a bit more casual, but you know, that might be okay for the summer, is the Rami fabric, which has got a really lovely texture to it. It's like very sort of more like rustic textured fabric. This is the dark olive, muted olive, um, which does come in quite a few different colours as well. Okay, the next one was patterns for a summer wedding dress. I'll be six months pregnant. For a woven, the first one that came to mind was the Friday Pattern Company Wilder, which you could definitely bring in with, you can make like a little waist tie if you wanted, because it is quite voluminous and gathered, but lots of, lots of space. And I suspect you probably wouldn't even need to make any adaptions for being pregnant to make that, because it's got so much ease in it anyway. But if you did want a bit of definition, I think you could definitely just make like a little, a little tie and sort of like tie it up over your bump to kind of pull it in or stretch wise classic you could go for the named patterns kilo wrap dress and again you could get like a really nice patterned viscose jersey for that or just go for like a classic plain and maybe a bright color which i think would be nice as well very comfy and again you wouldn't need to adapt it for being pregnant because it's just got enough space in it anyway and um, patterns for the new liberty tana lawn fabrics the avid seamstress the blouse is nice i've you i've made a lot uh i've made that out of lawn before the Freddie Passion Company Sagebrush, a bit more classic shirt vibes, the Archer, my favourite shirt. Um, you could you could make the Norma, like this one, um, or the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo, lots of different options for the lawns, they would all be nice. Um, the next one was Easy and Trendy Blouse for some viscose remnants. I've got a 40 and a 60 centimetre piece, something that would work in a combination of florals. I was trying to measure this one that I've got on because I think depending on what size you're making, I think you could get it out of it because like shoulder to here, that is like maybe about, I don't know, roughly on the meter stick, about half a meter. So you might get out of your 60 centimeter bit, you might get the bodice and then you get your sleeves out with a 40 centimeter bit. You'd maybe have to take some of the fullness out of the sleeves and then just get like a pre-made, use another fabric that you've got for the facing or or get a pre-made bias binding and do it that way. So I think you might, depending on what size you're making, you might be able to squeeze out of that. Okay, the next one was a vest slash t-shirt pattern to use up some cotton jersey fabric, which has a 40% two-way stretch. The true bias Zoe tank top or the real t-shirt would be nice. Or another really lovely simple tee that I really like is the Closet Core Core Tee, which is also a free one. Um, okay, the net, let me just see what ones I've missed here. And then I've got a few questions left that were sent in beforehand. At, at school, taught to tack for accuracy, then took pins out before sewing. Tacking may come from tailoring. My mum always encouraged me to do it. 
Um, the fabric suggests look lovely, thank you, no probs. Any sewing, sewing society pattern hints, apology if you've already done this at the beginning. Yeah, if you watch back the beginning bit, I chat a little bit about it there. Sage brush is good for pieces, yeah, because it's got that, it's got the yoke section, isn't it? So if it's all sort of like cut up a bit more. Hi Lauren, I made a fab dress with the navy cotton sateen with the white and orange flowers. Do you have any similar structure, texture, fabric, any colour or pattern? I do, yeah, but I can't, I can't actually think of what it's called right now. I think if you search um, either stretch cotton or cotton sateen, you'll find it. But if you also just send me a direct message after the live, I can send you a link to it. Um, I've nearly finished my Archer shirt kit. Exciting. Well done. Um, summer dress pattern suggestions for light dress. That is a total cover up. Um, I would say you could make the, t the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta is quite nice for summer. I made one of them last summer. You can do long sleeves in that and it's quite long. That's a nice option. We were in serious trouble at school if you stitched over pins and jammed the machine. I can imagine. Rule breakers. Okay. The next one was, I have just brought, bought the Itch to Stitch So Beautiful book and I am interested in making the tack sang wrap. I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Wrap dolman jacket, but wondering about fabric selection for something that would look sharp, like an alter like a blazer alternative. I feel like it runs the risk of looking like a bathrobe. I had a quick look at the technical drawing on this. So yeah, it's got the dolman sleeve is where, where it's like a bit more sort of like just kind of continued in, like the bodice and the sleeve are kind of as one. So it means it's quite loose round there and then it wraps round. The two options that I think you could use that would look a bit smarter, but trying to avoid the bathrobe style, um, I think this would be really good. This is the bamboo twill that I quite often suggest people use for trousers, like wide leg trousers. It's, it's a bamboo and recycled polyester mix and it drapes really beautifully. So it means in the fullness, you're not, it's not gonna be like stiff and oversized. It would drape really nicely into the fullness of the garment. And I think it's a really smart fabric. So I think that is a really good option. The other one to consider would be the Smooth Drape Tensile Twill, which has got a little bit more of like a softer feel to it, but you know, quite a few nice, really lovely colors. Um, and, and yeah, it's nice and drapey as well and a nice sort of thickness. I definitely don't think it would look like a bathrobe in either of them. So a few choices there. Um, and then the next one was, I'd like pattern and fabric suggestions for a beach cover up, please, as I'm starting to dream about my holiday in the sun. That's exciting. Um, <coughs> so you could go, I've actually made all of these and used them like a, like a beach cover up. The True Bice Roscoe, the Hajun Handmade Phoenix Blouse, you can lengthen that a little bit. Um, and the sew over it Sylvia robe is another nice one. So that's that's one where it's a bit more like, you know, it's like a robe. Whereas the other ones are a bit almost like a bit more dresses that you would put put over. Um, so I would say that you wanna you could use a cotton lawn. You could also use gauze, and we do have um a really nice range of a nice range of double gauzes at the moment that have got a really lovely little metallic stripe in them i don't know if the camera is going to pick that up but we've got a white we've also got quite a nice bright summery blue color a light green and a light pink as well and um, this is the white lurex pinstripe cotton double gauze fabric and it's 13.50 a meter and um, so i think that would look look really nice Okay, and then the last one that I've got here is, could you please suggest a lightweight denim suitable for a summer Lyra dress similar to the Sewing Society kit that you did last year? The closest thing that I've got at the moment to that kit is this one here, which is the Indigo Combed Cotton Chambray Fabric, and it's 1120 a meter and it's 100% cotton. And, you know, you can see it looks like a denim. And I would say the weight is pretty, identical to be honest to the to the Lyra dress that we did so yeah that would be if you wanted to recreate that this is a good one to go for and um, okay what have I missed here just finishing the joy jacket sewing society kit it's been easy to sew with your video thank you oh that's good and um, just finished my first first archer light blue poplin the videos 
all 15 of them are wonderful. I have approximately 50 centimetres of the Thelma quilted fabric left after cutting out the fibre mood Irma. Any suggestions for what I can do with the remaining fabric? Um, I used offcuts that I had of that to make the Waves and Wild Aviator hat and I lined it with the Sherpa, the cotton sh um, sherling, sorry, cotton sherling fabric. So you could do that. Um, actually, I did also see somebody on Instagram had used, it, used that fabric to make a bag as well, which looked really cool. Um, so a few options there. Okay, what nice lightweight indigo denims do you have? I want to make a shirt dress. That's, that's, that's good for a shirt dress, this one. That's the, this is the combed, indigo combed cotton chambray fabric. Um, okay, so if anybody has any other questions, quickly pop them in now. That's me at the end of my ones that got sent in beforehand. So I will be here next Monday again. Um, and then I won't be here for a couple of weeks after that while it's Easter time. So, so yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the rest, so the rest of the week is just going to be busy, busy, busy here at G&G, &G, getting ready for the event. I really can't wait to see um, those of you who can make it to the in-person event. We had something very exciting get put in the studio today that I want. I'm going to I'm going to try and get like an, a, a little sneaky picture tomorrow where I just sort of make it quite abstract and try to show you what it is without revealing the whole thing. You need to come to the actual day to see it. But there'll be if you can't come to the actual day, um, don't worry. There's going to be a photographer there that's taking loads of photographs. I'm going to try and take lots of videos as well. Um, I won't be streaming live on Saturday, no. Um, but I will try really hard to like put little videos and stuff on stories for those of you that can't come. Um, but I will do after I've got quite a lot of videos to share after it comes out because I've got a video that's all about the process of designing the fabric. Um, which I obviously can't share now because then I don't want you to see it in full. You need to wait till the weekend for that. And then I'll also do one that's about the window display and like the garments that we've got in the window. So there'll be that video. And then I'll do like a video about the day as well, which will probably be like a little bit behind the scenes, like us getting ready and that sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I'll put, I'll put like a video together that's sort of like footage of the day and everything. And the, as I said, there will be lots of photographs too because... We've got a photographer coming on Saturday to, to, to make sure that we get lots of photographs taken because there's a chance that it might be hard for me to remember to take photos. And also, classic, I mean, I can't, I can't always be taking the photos. I want to try and be in them. This is what happens when we go on family holidays. I'm never in any of the photos. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be loads of things for you to share. So even if you can't make it, I'll try and make it feel like you were there. Um, and then of course, yeah, I'll, as I said at the beginning, for those of you that missed it, if you didn't join at the start, I'm going to send out a newsletter, maybe Wednesday or Thursday this week, that's got like all of the information that you need to know about the weekend, so, like the timings of things and all of that sort of stuff so that you know. Um, so yeah. Um, let me just check what well, I don't get to see all of these comments after I quit the video. So I'm just going to have a quick scan. But thank thank you for all your th congratulations, everyone. That's very kind. Looking forward to the reveal. That's great that you guys are all so excited. Could you make wide leg trousers out of the double gauze you have shown? Mm, I think they would feel like pyjamas if you did. Um, have a great celebration. Thank you, everybody. Um... Okay, well, thank you everyone. Hopefully I'll see some of you soon in person. Um, and and yeah, I'll see you back here live again for a normal, normal Monday chat next week. <laughs> Bye everyone.